Dear Twin Flame Souls out there, welcome to the Twin Flame Awakening Journey Podcast and today is in episode number 60. In today's episode, I am going to walk you through different types of Twin Flames journeys or how it starts for Twin Flames. I have been on this journey now quite some while and I realized that not everyone's journey is exactly black and white that if this happens to you that is exactly the the twin flame journey although there is a one very common factor which we cannot discover at the end of the podcast after discovering the different ways and styles or different way that souls recognize each other on this journey i remember when i first entered into this journey I obviously started googling and trying to figure it out what just happened and I ticked all the boxes of based on what was the information out there so even though I ticked all the boxes for me it was like I still cannot believe it's a twin flame journey because my ego my 3d life never planned for that I never thought in my life that this will happen to me Well, my soul, of course, already knew it's going to happen. And I'm going to walk you through before I came onto this journey. I, mine is like, in that sense, it's like a textbook. I, I, somehow it happened that I had a person came to my life who said, do you want to do a soul realignment in Akashic Records? And I decided to do this, although I did not, have a lot of faith in this I still decided that why not what can happen well what can happen is that there was an intense spiritual awakening after this soul realignment and I had no idea I remember I did my soul realignment session in January so soul realignment means that you're going to align your soul with a purpose back then I was very naive I did not understand the whole concept around it I thought it's just going to align with my myself my ego self so it's gonna go on from there so realignment means that you're gonna really align with your soul who you are from your soul level and that's what she did to me actually but I had no idea so that happened to me in January and I had 21 days where I had to repeat my mantra, where I had to listen one song, where I was doing all of this. And I'm going to be very honest, in the beginning when I entered into this, I did not believe it uh, that it's going to happen. I did feel a connection with the source very well and very quickly. But I, I was not aware. Like I said, I've been always intuitive, but I was not aware that it's what's going to come next from there. So I end this at the end of January, feeling really blissful, feeling really like, like calm, feeling like I'm flowing and I had so much joy in the life as well. And then at the end of the March, I ran into my twin flame and I had no idea. So now I'm going to talk about the most typical scenario, how twin flames meet. And again, I'm going to say that there is no way you're going to meet your twin flame if you don't have any spiritual background in that sense that there must be some kind of frequency either you meditate you do let's say you yoga do do yoga or you are reading some mindfulness books or anything like this there has to be some kind of an element And in today's episode, I'm going to bring out, I think, four or five different ways how Twin Flames meet. And of course, feel free to leave a comment if any of these types, what I'm uh, sharing today, will match with yours. Or is there something else? Because I'm telling, today I've heard so many stories. And I want to say a huge thank you for each one of you who have trusted me with their journey and their story. And it has made me to realize that this journey is way more than this method will help and this how it's going to be and this is how it's going to be. Of course, when I first came into this journey, like I said, my journey ticked all the boxes and that's why 
in a sense, I was convinced I'm on a twin flame journey. At the same time, I still didn't want to believe it until I had no other option, which I've spoken many and many times on my on my podcast. Uh, but there are many other ways how twin flames meet and what's going to happen on their journey. So I'm going to bring in the ones that I now know. And that's why I don't believe in one method. I don't believe that if I give for each one of you the same thing, the same way of connecting with your soul, that it will work. Each soul soul is different. That's why also, if you have a chance this year, do your Akashic Records reading. You will see where you're coming from, which planetary, which universe, which part of it you're coming from. Have a look at this because all of this matters actually on your journey. We have to understand it's not an ego-based journey. It is a soul-based journey. On my previous episode, I was talking about it, how traumatic it must have been for your soul to split. And then you're seeking for this in the universe. You kind of know that you're together, but you can't find each other. And you're always looking and looking and looking as a soul. And then this happens here in 3D. What a powerful event. And... It is, in a sense, very beautiful. Painful at the same time, I totally know. But today I want to focus not so much on the pain because I think we always focus a lot on the pain on this journey, which is part of it. And I know this pain. I know this pain very well. But there is also this love, this beautiful, deep love. And I want to focus on this as well. So just, I think today's episode is going to be a little different than you're used to. But okay, let's go into the most or maybe the most common twin flame journey, like a template, (laughs) if we may say so, is the fact that you happen to go somewhere where you've never been before or you didn't really need to go there. You didn't really need to be there, let's say a new job or new kind of assignment, or you just had to do something new and it's not really aligned what you're normally doing. Maybe a little bit, but not so much. And then you run across with this person. And first, of course, you can feel this intense connection. You can feel that something just happened and you don't know what. And then it lasts about three to six weeks. And then comes the separation, like the electricity is cut off. Like all of a sudden, this person disappears. Ida tells you, oh, I found somebody else or I'm moving on, I'm not ready or don't say anything to you and just disappears. And this is one of the most common that it's a very short period of time where you meet, you feel like you've never felt something in this life before. And then of course, your mind starts to play tricks with you by thinking, how come I can be so obsessed about the person I met maybe three, four times in this three to six weeks. It was a very short period of time. Another day I was going through the timelines of mine and I was just so confused. I was like, in a sense of a timeline, I know this person one month based on how much I actually saw him in the real life. We never had anything physical. We never went on a date. We never had any of these things. So it's even crazier, like there was nothing I was looking for. Uh, And again, I've been repeating this over and over again, that I am very friendly by nature. I love talking to people. I love being uh, in a sense of with kind and beautiful people. That's why I'm very happy that now I have this chance to talk to you and share your story. But I'm never romantically interested in a man like I never had. I. My dating history is very small. Um, I'm, I have most of my, actually my friends are male. So for me, being friends with a man is, is very normal. And then that happened to me. It was such a hard time for me to realize what happened to me. Because how come I meet someone who is not my type, who... I'm not planning to meet. I had no plans. I was not on a dating apps. I was not, there was nothing like this. And all of a sudden I could not stop thinking about this person no longer. 
and it was a very short period of time if we take as a time. I know that the time is illusion because somehow another day when I was also again putting things together to see the bigger picture I realized it felt so much longer to me. Yes I look at this one month but for me it 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 really feels that I know this person all my life. And not the person, the soul, that that this connection, I know this for all of my life. And then of course comes in the separation, which is the time where you're gonna go through your ego death. And for me it was again very painful. It was a time where I just literally could not understand what happened to me. And I have to go through this by myself. I do not recommend that to anybody. I really don't. It's it's just so hard to push through by yourself. Maybe it is. Maybe it was a way for me to cope with that. But I still think I wish I could have talked, at least shared something with someone who understands what I went through. Because it can get very lonely and it can get very intense. But I did that. I decided because I thought this is not real. Today, my main purpose, like I've said, is I've given opportunity for people to share the story with me to get at least some kind of a pressure off. And then from there to find their higher self, their higher purpose and move on, like let yourself to live as a soul. And of course, then comes this adjustment period time where you feel like, hmm, I think I don't know what comes next. It comes this kind of numbness that you feel like, I don't know what comes next. And all you can hear somehow is your soul's voice who is telling you have to do this, you have to go there, you have to be this. This is why I would recommend for every one of you who is listening, when you go through this, slow down. I know it's hard in this world, but it's very important that you start slowing down. If you have a support around you, allow them to support you during this time sleep more uh, spend more time in the nature less tv less scrolling on social media try to try to be on that moment because you need to it's like a recovery after (laughs) in a sense it's like you being through an enormous surgery right now and what you need after a surgery recovery No one is going to go to the job the day after they had, uh, let's say, they they had a broken foot and they had a surgery and the day after they're going to go to work. But it's the same with soul and energy. When we've been going through our ego death, we need to recover. So do not, if you have this possibility that you have supporting people around you, just tell them it's a time where I need more support it's a time where I need more help Uh, it is a very intense period of time so that's why I would like to just say to you that if you can rely on others who are in your life on that time and so this is the pretty one that the the I would say I think on internet it's the one of the most common one which you can find I found it happened to me and I went through every single stage of this. What is there about eight stages? I went through really all of them, but I'm not going to talk about the stages. I'm going to talk about the different ways how twin flames meet. So the second version, how twin flames can meet and come across is that they actually meet when they are much younger. So whether it's in a, in a middle school or high school or in college, all these kind of times. And that happens that you also have this that you you like you remember even until today you remember this these eyes you remember how you locked the eyes and there was something but since you were younger and just growing up into this 3d world you didn't really pay attention what was it but if i ask you today to remember the time when you first met and you locked the eyes it's like you remember this one-on-one how you met and what happened and that's typically is that 
let's say you met in a middle school, you remember this boy or a girl, but you really didn't have anything romantically together. And some of you might have, some of you were together, but eventually it still didn't work out and you, and you broke apart, you, your ways went apart. And so there on you, let's say you met somebody else, you married somebody, your, your other part of the soul married somebody and so on and so on. And then all of a sudden you started to have this, like this images started to flash back at you. And it often happens that you have done some spiritual work with yourself. For example, you're starting to read more about spirituality. You're starting to come across with people who tell you about souls or the energy or the frequency. And then you're also starting to feel that this person, what was with this person? I know this person and this image is in my head over and over and over again. So now what happens is when you come to this realization, that's the time where your ego starts to die. So again, you're going to have your dark night of the soul where you realize I knew this person all the time. It, this person was there always. And now you either start seeking for it or the life starts to bring it together. But then, of course, there is a life situation in between, which means uh, you are married or your twin is married. But when you come together, you still can. And that's the moment you realize it's me. It's my soul. And then, of course, it's going to trigger your spiritual awakening is going to trigger the pain. It's going to trigger all of this because all of a sudden you realize I am on this journey. I need to become my soul. I cannot run away from it no longer. And of course, there comes a bit of a regret with that. But I want to say to you that it's not much you could have done. So don't hold yourself in a regret or in a place of pain because when you hold the onto the past you're going to hold on to the pain that why I didn't do this why I didn't seek for longer why did I choose to marry somebody else no that was all your soul your soul already decided all of that so whether you liked it or not in a sense what is happening right now your soul had chosen this way and now when the time is right you have met again and you know that you just know if you think about it, we meet so many people in our lifetime. And how come it is that, especially when it comes to a twin flame connection, that they're going to come back to your life? One way or another, they're going to come back to your life. So I'm just going to say that if you are on this twin flame journey and you are currently in a separation already five years or 10 years, or 15 years and you think thinking it's never going to happen. I can tell you based on the stories I've heard today. The time will go on. Yes, we have a time. But if it's your true twin flame, they will come back to you. And one of the most important part of it is that you will always invite your soul to come back to you. In my last episode, why did I tell you that when the twin flames as a soul, you separated. So you have to visualize for yourself as a soul that you are like a round ball. You're a round ball as a soul. And then something traumatic in the universe happened that your soul split. And now it, one part of the soul went all the way to the one side and the other one to the other side. But both of these parts are looking for each other but can't get back together to merge. And then it happens now, or maybe it happened even in your past life. But now it happens. Your soul is one again, and your soul feels this euphoria when you come together. But then what we start doing is that 3D life comes in between. And if our twin flame is not replying to us the way we prefer, or pulls away, or runs away from us, or doesn't talk to us, we start also talking. No, I don't need this. I don't want to hear anything about my twin flame. It doesn't matter. Let my twin flame do this. And this is all ego talk now. 
let this twin flame be let he feel let him feel the uh, sadness and i don't want to let i don't want to hear anything about it because actually you do actually you do if i'm totally honest you want to hear from your twin flame you want to be connected with your twin flame but then to protect yourself from this heartbreak and that pain you're going to tell the opposite that you don't want and that's okay we are humans we have feelings we have way of protecting ourselves and that's totally okay don't blame yourself but i just want to say one thing like i said before it must have been a very traumatic event for your soul to split and now to build this trust that you will never split again because at this moment i can tell you that you are united with your twin with your soul if you met your twin flame this lifetime you are now one again because you took the energy that's what you felt in your body the energy the soul that is missing for it and now it's one that's why it's called 5d union because you are one now but now when you constantly have that fear that your twin is gonna run away that your twin is not going to love you when your twin is never gonna come back how do you speak to your soul you speak oh He's never going to come back. I'm never going to see him. So it's all about the fear that he's not here. And what your soul feels is like, don't you understand that I'm here? I'm connected. Why you don't feel me? Why you don't talk to me? Why you don't allow me to become one with you? I know very well, I have been mad on my twin flame as well with the certain messages and with certain things where I feel like, no, I'm going to delete everything. I'm never going to say anything. I don't want to talk about it. I, why he needs to know what I do and where I am and why we need this conversation. And I know that comes from my ego because obviously I wish him to understand this connection from way more than in a love and love way that the romantic relationship but he's not yet there and when my channeling was done to me and i was told that your soul's mission is to help your husband to go through spiritual awakening your twin to guide to help to go through and help others to guide to help others and guide them when they are on this journey it made me feel very, very small towards the universe. I realized, hmm, all right, here I am. It's not about how I want. It's not about how I feel. It's not about all of this. I am a human and I allow myself to have these feelings. I allow myself to have five, ten minutes of feelings where I feel disappointed or I feel like it's never going to work out. It's impossible for, for example, the same with my husband because he's going through a tremendous spiritual awakening and it's not easy at all. Another day was a beautiful time where he said to me that he was complaining about his body pains and not complaining but sharing with me about his body pains and the things he's going through. And I told him like, you have to go through the tunnel by yourself. All I can do is to be here and just support you with my knowledge with the things I know that's going to come but the tunnel the portal you're going to cross by yourself and you're going to feel good but it is a process and it was so nice of him to say to me that you know I am so lucky I have you who understands this and I feel so sorry I was not there for you when you went through this because you have heard my stories how painful it was for me and I never shared that to anybody none of my close friends know because obviously that journey itself was killing me inside as there were so many aspects of of this my soul meeting another my soul in a male's body and I tremendously obviously fell in love I didn't understand what happened but you know also that you can fall in love when your soul is in a female body and let's say I'm a female and I fall in love into the female. It's totally okay. Or man for a man as well. I'm going to say that it's not about your soul chooses an avatar. And if this happens in this lifetime because you have uh, lifted your vibration. It's not about a uh, man or a woman. And I've, he uh, I've heard stories today that I would say that 
in a sense, God has given me or the universe has given me a bit of a mild version because there are stories out there that are way more intense than mine. Anyways, what I try to tell you with this second part is that you are going to meet again. So if you met your twin flame when you were much younger and the life has been in between and you've always felt like somehow this image comes back to your eyes where you lock the eyes, then you have met your twin flame. But it just took you some time to realize and let go of the ego in between. So then the third one is that where you don't actually recognize that you have met a twin flame and you are the one who is the runner. So I would also say that runner and chaser dynamics, they, sh they, sh they switch. Which means that sometimes your twin flame, who you are chasing right now, was already awakened way before you, had this intense feeling with you, all he wanted was you wanted to be the same way like you are today, but you had no idea. So you were the one who was running, you were the one who was blocking him, didn't want to hear anything from him. You're the one who was trying to protect yourself. That comes a lot from the protection energy. You know, now I could see this, that when, you know, for example, it's a bit difficult example, but I'm trying to bring it in because that's what I see what happens in a both in a soul and mind level. For example, you had a friend who told you that you went for a, let's say, you went for a travels together and your friend abandoned you there and never came back. And the next time your friend comes again and says, oh, let's go to travel. You've learned your lesson and you understand that I cannot rely on this person. So I'm not going to trust and I'm going to protect myself with every way possible. And I believe that some of the souls have that protection energy because I know when I've done the calls and I discovered the energy, this enormous amount of protection energy, which means your, one, your part of the soul is trying to protect you that what if this other part of me is going to go again? So I better protect myself right now, not to feel again this separation, because again, I'm going to tell you that must have been extremely difficult for our soul when it's separated. So it's not so much always about the 3D situation that we feel. It's also the energy. Our soul carries the energy. Our soul is an energy. In the universe, we are the energy. It's the same like we cannot see the Wi-Fi, can you? But Wi-Fi is there. So it's the same with the soul. It's the energy. Because if a person dies, nothing moves anymore. The energy is out. It's like plugged out. It goes on. But the energy keeps on going somewhere. The avatar is dead. The avatar is done. But the soul, of course, I don't have a proof of this today. I see more and more if you listen to the near death of experiences and all of this, which is very interesting because I'm very into soul. I think my journey itself started with the soul realignment. I would have, like I said, I never believed any of these things until it happened to me. And again, I'm not here to convince anybody that this is how it is. You have to believe it. I believe that we all have our own truth our own way of seeing and that's why sharing your stories sharing your uh, insights helps to bring the light to it i don't believe in one way and one thing and that's why i'm not a big fan no longer of the term twin flames because you put some into the box it's like okay you are the twin flame only when you have this 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 and this if you met your twin flame randomly if you had a short love bubble face three to six weeks, if you uh, had a separation right after of this, and then you had your dark night of the soul. That's all how it is. And while in the beginning I would have said, yes, I believe this way, today I can say definitely not. I have been proven wrong so many times based on the stories I've heard, and I want to say again, thank you. But at the end of the podcast, I'm going to tell you what is the main uh, doom of the twin flames in but it doesn't matter that the way you're going to, that the way you're going to meet is always exactly the same 
I, I, I just don't believe that. Even though, yes, mine in a sense is like this internet version template. I ticked all the boxes over there, but I don't think it's the only way. So the next one, uh, the fourth version is that you actually be in a relationship already with your twin flame. Funny enough, what happened to me last uh, week. It's just universe is so smart. I'm going to just tell you, if you feel the urge that you need to book the call with me, that your soul is telling you need to book for this day and this time, then just do it. Because you, your soul knows when the information is coming at you. I tell you, it's, it's incredible. Every single day when I have the calls, the calls are lining with one to another which means that the previous calls give me the answers to the next call and the next call gives the answer to the to the following. So it's like, I'm like, I, I don't make up this stuff. I never had, I don't know how long I've been doing these calls now, but I never had that someone calls me and says that they are on a twin flame journey, that they live together with the twin flame, they have children together. So my my first call started with a girl who said, you know, I've been listening to your podcast, but no one ever speaks about it, how difficult it is for twin flames to live together. And so she was bringing some light about it. Definitely going to make an episode about it because I know that many of us are in a separation and feeling that the separation is difficult. I'm also going to tell you, and I've said that many times, twin flames are not a romantic love story that once you are together, it's going to be butterflies and rainbows and unicorns and all of that yes you will always feel a very strong uh, energy with each other which is not which we cannot compare to anything else and we shouldn't but it is very intense and when something is very intense it also needs air it also needs space it also needs an understanding of the relationship itself it's not a regular relationship just you need to understand this when you are on this twin flame journey that's why there is the spiritual awakening because you need to be able to zoom out that's why everything what you're going to do uh, during the separation is going to help you in uh, once you are in a tree in a 3d living together so i had a call with her got a lot of information which i'm gonna t- make an episode in the future where how it is when twin flames live together i have many couples now who are in united in a 3d and i will also ask their feedback my own inner voice what my soul is telling how it is because i've said that from the very beginning twin flames are not a love story it is a journey and this journey is an ongoing whether you are together in a 3d or you're not even together but you will always have a connection this connection will never disappear once you are on this journey your soul is one you are united in 5d it is there it will never disappear there is no cord cutting there is no way of running away from it while you can try to run away from it it will catch up with you sooner or later and that's actually goes back to the previous the third example is that when you are running away from it, when you are the runner, it will catch up with you. You can be the one who uh, deletes. You are the one who can block. You are the one who says no, no, no. Sooner or later, it will catch up with you. I've seen this more and more. So those of you who are wondering if their twin flame will ever come back to their life, if their twin flame will ever realize that this connection is so profound yes they will it's just how much evil will they have in a sense this will be how they can take them evil can protect us very well and not to be like that but evil is very fragile because it's very fragile it's very evil it's evil to be defended and but at one point it will break apart and and then you have no longer the energy to fight with your soul and the mind and you're just going to surrender you're going to surrender listen i know i i know i'm i've met my my soul and i have to find my soul now and i have to to see what i can do of course there comes a lot of regret with this but again i want to say that do not blame yourself you just 
you just need a time to realize. And that's why also let's not blame our twin flames that they don't understand or why they don't feel this way or why they are protective mode because it takes them time. And I know we really want to be together with our twin flames. I know that. I, I understand you. I understand you from bottom of my heart. But you also have to make a peace with this that in a sense you are union with your with your soul, with your twin right now. And the more you're going to invite your soul to open up, energetic work works 100%. Ten, ten times better than talking in a 3D. Ten, 100 times better, I would say. I see more and more with my souls who are working with me and I'm guiding them what they have to do energetically because I do all of these things. And now you'll be wondering, of course, but you are not together. You are not living together. But that also has never been my, in the sense of my aim. Like I said from the very beginning, I was in love with my twin. I am still in that sense that, but these two loves are very different. I love my twin flame dearly because my twin flame is me, my soul. And whatever I'm going to tell to my twin flame is I'm telling to my soul. So I have to be very careful with the words I use, with the things I feel, because it's my soul and I don't want to lose my soul anymore. I love my soul so much. I love who I am from my soul level. But does that mean that I shouldn't have my twin flame to go through the spiritual awakening? No, I have to be there energetically supported. Is it easy for my ego sometimes? No, I do get sometimes frustrated because I'm like, how long it's going to take? And also another thing is, like I said, I did not want this because I... Like I said, I'm married to my soulmate. I love my children. I, and I, again, I mean, it sounds like I'm defending myself, but again, I'm going to say that I'm not the woman who dates or who seeks out for other women. It's, oh, sorry, women and men. I'm going to say the same, women and men, because my twin could have been in a woman, female body as well. I just, and so that's why for me was somehow... I never think that I want to be physically together. I wanted to understand what happened to me. Why did I feel this way? Did some parts of me, when it was in the beginning, dreaming of that romantic relationship and seeing all of it, definitely it was there. I'm not going to even lie and I'm not going to even say that if you feel this way, it's wrong. Definitely not. I felt all of this. I was willing to leave everything behind. I was willing to do everything but as the time was going on and I was given more and more information and that's all thanks to meditation the books I read so I would recommend again the power of now the alchemist is your bible if you're looking for a good journey of understanding of your soul um, you're not dying you're just waking up by April fool highly recommended I my husband is reading this right now it's very easily written and it makes you to understand things from the way higher level and uh, funny enough I was given this book when I was in a high in a pain where I didn't know what to do next and I went to see my friend and she, I told her that I don't want to stop on this because she's a very spiritual friend of mine and I told her I don't want to stop on this subject a lot but I met my twin flame and it's killing me inside and she pu pulled out this book and said, read this one, it will help you. And it really did. So thanks to April uh, Fool, I assume it's her name. <laughs> I might be wrong. I really, I have to double check. But I would highly recommend for everyone to read it. And then Magical Bread comes out as well. Yesterday I saw, um, I had a call with a beautiful soul and she said, look, I ordered it. So I would like to say that because the Magical Breadcrumbs is written by the guest who we had on this podcast and she's been on a twin flame journey and she's, she shares the, her journey from her perspective. So those of you who would need guidance and understanding, have a look at this. So now I again, typical me who jumps from one thing to another. So I don't know even if you're able to keep up where I am at this moment. But I want to say that then the fourth one is exactly that you've been in a relationship together. But it didn't simply work because there was so much emotion, so many feelings, so many things that happen. Normally, obviously, the relationship doesn't last like 
five years or ten. It's about maybe one or two years. It's like a short time. Can be longer in certain cases. And then you split apart. And then again, it takes you time over and over again. You're apart, you're dating somebody else, but still it's like you're starting to feel something inside of you that what was this energy? I never felt this energy again. And it's not that because in in the in the beginning of the relationship you felt certain like you thought this is the like how do I explain this better? I feel like I'm not explaining this very well. That you were together, there was an intense connection. You were maybe fighting a lot, you were misunderstood like a lot of things that were like you didn't understand at the same time there was an extreme pull towards each other. So it was always like you're together, you're not together because you were not going through yet the spiritual awakening. And that's why it's very important. And I just want to go back as I can see my mind is wandering so much around and I'm really apologizing for that. But talking about the twin flames who live together. So I had this girl who came and told her story. Right after her, I had another woman who jumps on a call and says, I've been living with my twin flame 24 years. Let me tell you how it is. And I was like, this is absolutely insane. I never in this time had a calls where someone comes and tells me how it is to live together with their twin flame. And now I have one call after another. These two people don't know each other. And they tell me the journey and story. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to touch on a topic where what happens when you actually live together and how you're going to be. So that's something we, I think before, it, it again, I'm not going to come from my perspective, but it's going to come from their perspective. So next thing, the fifth one is when you see, like you have, you've been spiritual pretty much your whole life. You've been meditating, you've been doing all kinds of things things like in a sense of you feeling connected to the source but at the same time you're feeling really lonely you're feeling like longing you're feeling like there's someone out there there's someone I have to meet but I don't know how to meet them and and it just feels like I need to see this person I need to meet this person but you don't know who and you're feeling like there's always someone missing. And then you start having in your meditation such a downloads of this person. Or you start seeing a man or a woman in your meditation. Because the more we meditate, the more we are able to download the information. The more we are able to do the channeling. The more the information is starting to come through us. And then you see this person way before you are actually going to meet in a 3D. So you kind of know that there is someone, but you can't really tell yet. And the moment you meet in a real life, you've been a shock, which means you, you are like, this is the person. This is the person I've seen on my meditations. This is the person who's been there. And that's the moment you realize that you have met your soul because you've been way connected before. And so your sp like spiritual awakening must have been way before that or and then it happens again in another level where it opens up a lot of things for you. I kind of believe I don't have a proof of it because I haven't had any other way of spiritual awakening. But Twin Flames is one of the most intense one because your soul merge back together. And it's like after all of these, I don't know, years or this centuries or I don't know I believe our souls are very old since the beginning of the universe so it's 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 a quite a lot of quite a, quite a lot of years I would say and we still actually don't know the exact uh, age of the universe we do have some number out there but some of them are debating that that can't be real anyways it's not even about that we think of that when at one point our soul split and now it comes together it must be traumatic regardless in a soul level as well. I know what happened inside of me when my soul met my soul. I felt sick. I felt like I have been charged with the electricity. I could not think no longer. I lost all the control. There was no time and space. There was something like I really will tell you that someone electrically charged me. 
and I didn't understand what happened to me. I had no conscious awareness that this can be twin flames or that I met my soul, my other part of my soul. It, it just didn't make any sense to me. Of course, today I am so open-minded and I have so much to learn. So all of your feedback, all of your way of seeing this is so welcome in this podcast because my aim is to bring the information that is real that has happened to people and even though it can be like because I thought when I first came to this journey that I was alone that no one else ever experienced something like this thankfully that some people had shared their experience thankfully that there was some information on the internet that helped me to cope with this but I still thought I'm alone I'm alone in this like there is no way I'm gonna get out of it and then the sixth version I would say is um, that you meet someone online and of course nowadays pay attention who you're meeting online and all of that of course always be cautious but you're meeting someone online you're not supposed to really meet and it happens we can happen the same way with dating apps uh, social media, all these kind of things that you meet this person on online and you have an immediate connection. You have this immediate feeling like I know this person. There is something about this person. And even if you haven't seen the face, you haven't seen anything, you just feel like there is something. I don't know what it is, but it is something. And so obviously your conversations will flow. You will feel happy. You will feel all of it this energy you feel like you know this person you start having like deep conversations that you would never do of course just have a little warning internet can be a little dangerous place I'm like a mom here but (laughs) but what I want to say in overall that I've heard so many stories and I even remember myself back and that's why I believe in this is that when I first physically met my twin flame we met for about 10 seconds we just locked the eyes for a second and it was just a time, you know, when it was a COVID. So we all had masks on and everything. And it was just a moment. We gave a fist bump for each other just because we were in the same working environment. And we just, he said, oh, you're working over here. Okay, cool. And so that's it. And I was not even supposed to work there. There was no reason for me to do that. And, and then, uh, He started, he found my number because we were in the same group. But I'm just going to mention that I was in a group of 180 people or 160 people were in the same group. And he found me and he started talking to me. Again, I'm going to say I never replied to strangers. And I'm even bad at replying to my friends. So think about it. For me to take this step of replying to a stranger was not a thing. I, I, I don't do it. And then something inside of me started to tell me, you need to reply, you need to reply. I remember I didn't reply in the first 24 hours. And then he followed up and said, hey. And I was like, okay, well, listen, I'm going to be polite. I'm going to say, hey. But inside of me, my soul was just screaming and I was not aware of it. So that's also about meeting a person online. Nowadays, we have the technology that allows us to meet online the same way like you can book a call with me that I can talk to you I can have like I can also energetically activate you all of these kind of things can now happen because we have the technology before it couldn't happen but also with energy like that how to say teleporting with energy is totally possible but we're gonna go into this the next time So anyways, these were the six versions that I know of how you can meet your twin flame, how it can happen to you. So I would just like you to bring in which version are you, even though, again, I jumped from one thing to another. So you can write a little longer in the comments or share your story. Or if there is some other version that you didn't hear today and you say this happened to me. So feel free to leave in a comment, share your story with me in the sense of how it happened and so on. And now I'm going to bring in what is the most common thing to know that you are on a twin flame journey. Another day I started to analyze. I've been doing a lot of, a lot of in a sense of data work and more logical work of realizing how come the twin flames are so different than others. And I started looking back to my dating history or the people I fell in love when I was younger. And I was, like I said, I haven't 
I, I don't have a huge dating record, so it's not something I have to go through a lot. But I started to analyze all of them. How did I feel about them and what happened during this time? And I remember I was really in love with a man when I was in my 20s, right before meeting my husband. I was extremely in love with him. I was also thinking about him. And now when I compare the thinking, they're still so different. They were so different the way I was thinking about it because there was exactly I was thinking in a really 3D. While with my twin flame, the thinking or the knowing is in 5D. And so I was comparing all of these, what has been the difference in between for me to fall in love or feeling like this love is not working out. And the number one thing is spiritual awakening, the dark night of the soul. You are on a twin flame journey when it's going to trigger your spiritual awakening, when you're going to have a spiritual calling, where your ego is going to die, literally is going to die. And it's not a joke. I, I don't wish that to anybody somehow, but at the same time, not being ruled by your fragile ego is so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. So just this is the number co one common thing. If you are on this journey, it's going to trigger your spiritual awakening. Your soul is going to speak to you. You're going to become your soul. You're going to have life changes. Not everybody, but you're going to be connected to your soul stronger than ever before. And that's the common. That's the most common thing on Twin Flames. And you can, of course, share if any of you, like we spoke about it once, that you can fall, meet your false twin flame and then have your spiritual awakening. And that can also be that you're having the soul contract before to come. So not everything is so black and white, but when you're going to meet your twin flame, you are going to feel the electricity. You're going to understand your spiritual awakening is going to be triggered sooner or later. Whether when you met your twin flame when you were 15, years old and now you're 55 and you're starting your spiritual awakening it's very normal it just means that you were able to hold on to your ego very very long time so share your share your insights with me and another thing is what i want to bring in with this podcast is uh, love letters and love poems and love stories I know we always talk about the pain. We also always talk about the separation. And I'm so thankful that you have shared your story with me. On the next episode, we are going to have a next guest post, uh, where, which I'm going to read. But I also want to bring in more love. I want to bring in more love energy. This week, I had also a chance to hear some love poems, love stories. Because at the end of the day, like I say, yes, twin flames are not a romantic relationship. But they are the divine love. We are the divine love once we become one. And we're going to create something with this love. And we're going to heal. We're going to create. We're going to share. And that's the beauty of it. And we should never ever forget this. It is intense. Yes, absolutely. And that's why going into your soul and understanding your soul is extremely important. But also we cannot forget this deep, beautiful love. The words we heard from our twin flame, the things they compared to us, the, the way they were expressing the love to us. That's beautiful. And you should never forget that. And that's why for those of you who have poems or songs or stories from your twin flame that is a love letter, please send it to me, twinflameawakeningjourney at gmail.com. I would love to share this with the community because I would like to also bring it back that yes, you are in the separation, but the love never dies. The love will never die. So I just, it's the same. We have been comparing this so many times. It's like the notebook. The moving notebook is very much like Twin Flames. The love never dies. At the end of the notebook movie, they die together. I... And this is another topic which has been going on my comment section is about what happens if your twin flame dies earlier. 
those of you who have a, a situation like this or it happened to you, please feel free to share what happened inside of you, how you're feeling, what happened, and just to get a bigger picture. So that's something to look forward in this 2024 podcast with me. So just, I would like to say again, thank you for being here. I'm going to go again through some few details. We are going to have our group session on the 21st of uh, January at uh, 12 o'clock New York time, 6 o'clock in the evening uh, Paris time. If you are my Patreon supporter, it is free for you to join. Uh, Patreon is $5.99 a month and that will help me to put more content, research more, bring out information that I hope will help you on this journey including the workshops, including the exercises, meditations, channeling, all of these kind of things. So your support means a lot to me because that makes, that helps me to take more time for this project or not this project, for this journey. And uh, so if you, and also at the, this month, once a month, I will choose one winner who is a paid Patreon member that can win a channeling and talk with me. So this is what we're going to do at this upcoming Sunday. Feel free to join. If you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe, stay connected. I love seeing it. And then I'm going to go again through the retreat. A retreat is going to happen at the beginning of March, 7, 8, 9, 10 of March, 2024. It is once a year event, which happens during the Shivaratri where Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine unite. I'm doing this retreat because that changed everything for me, the harmony, the way I, I connected with my twin flame. It changed absolutely everything. And now it's my time to give back. It's designed to unite your Divine Feminine and Divine Masculine energies. Uh, if you would like to join, there are install payments away available right now. So you pay around 200 40 euros until the retreat comes so it's in three times payment i would recommend you to secure your spot as quickly as possible just tell me that yes i would like to come but i will be paying let's say in february or something like this just to make sure i have the spot it is only once a year event i will not make a second event unless i'm gonna come to united states and i'm going to serve the same experience for you Texas is right now in a I know Texas is huge but it's one part where I'm planning to come uh, so if that happens I'll be definitely organizing something that can help you to become your higher self unite your energies and just feel your soul feel who you are and so those of you who would like to come please email me and uh get in touch with me quickly because I know we have I think two or three spots available I'm not 100% sure I have to look up again on the emails and so just hurry up before I have to tell that we are sold out and yeah that's it I hope you enjoyed this episode I would like to hear your feedback how did you meet your twin flame what was your journey and and so yeah just share um, anything you wish with me Thank you so much for listening today and I hope to see you soon. You are absolutely amazing soul and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love and light. <laughs>